phonograph here. Oh, there's another checkers piece on the floor. Okay, I, I feel a little bit dumb there, to be honest. Okay, a beating heart on a painting. Uh, working out. Okay. Is the new move gonna happen? Yep. And these are not legal moves and checkers, but uh, I think it's just supposed to suggest a game in progress. And now it's raining pieces of both colors? No, it's just brown. It's just brown pieces. Uh, okay, and a new wing of the house is opened. From this area here. I really hope I don't have to open up all these walls, because that's going to take a while. Shut off the light. Uh, you know, always good to save power. Uh, plus, we have all these candles. Spooky candles that everywhere. Oh, that's that's cool. On the mirror, there's like kind of a scratch portrait. I, I like that. Uh, that that feels appropriate for the glass of the mirror. It is also unsettling somehow. I think that drawer may have actually intended to be stuck. <laughs> Somebody tried to flush a teddy, a bunch of fucking apples. Oh boy. Don't want to think about the origins of these apples all of a sudden. Uh, okay. Oh, and I've discovered a checkers piece. Something creepy gonna happen with that mirror that I have a unenviable vista of. Oh, and I think I've spotted another checkers piece on the bureau over there, which is kind of nice. Yep. All right. Two seems to be enough most of the time. Once again, uh, I wouldn't say I'm particularly scared. I'm sure I could get startled here and make a big noise, but uh, I'm not actually... The tension is not being built up towards a fright. It's being built up through kind of like... To, I don't know, kind of more of a cool set piece, which... Again, I, I will say that I don't mind that this game is not pathetic terrifying because the thrill of being scared is not actually pleasant for me. Uh, once again, bushels and bushels of apples. I'm just feeding my wife nothing but apples. And my kid nothing but apples. That, that's definitely grounds for CPS. I took that. I feel like I tried to take that piece, did it? But it doesn't seem to have come. Or is there actually just like on the scale something? Oh, no, there we go. Okay. So, that's interesting. I can't take the piece off the scale. It's almost like I need something to put in its place. Yep. Oh, wait. Oh! That was, um... <laughs> See, that is just a tiny bit eerie, I will confess. Alright, uh, let's see what else we got here. Alright, so I put the weight in place, and I'm pretty sure that that will keep the baby at bay. Wow. Uh, did I unlock progression? Maybe. Oh, no, this is like the bathroom stair. Yep, unlock progression. So, since I actually find the, the thrill, like, the, the thrill, quote-unquote, of being startled to be unpleasant, uh, I'm all for an atmospheric horror game, which this, this is, um, which is less about startling the daylights out of you and more about, kind of, uh, grimness. Like, I, I think I've, I've dinged it a little bit for not having like a lot of story depth. Oh, here's the creepy painting that we made that everybody seems to hate, which I don't remember the name of. Oh, it's replaced with a heart, and there's like a string and line. Oh, let's, um, I can't seem to go through there, which I had actually assumed that was the way forward. But I mean, I, I, as I think, you know, as I think you'd probably agree, there's, there is something going on in this story. There's, there's a decent amount of narrative. I'm not even sure how well you can hear me over the cacophony. Uh. Ready? Ready for the unveiling?
And it's my wife, as I presume. Yes! Once. That's it! <laughs> it's beautiful. Perfect. Happy Just ending! Like Yay! I always imagined. Oh. What? What is this? I don't understand. You don't think it's coming to life in no. this bag? What do you think would happen? Stop it! Please! I was so close! This time... I almost had it! I almost had it. The painting that would replace my wife. Uh-oh, well, back to the studio. I feel like we're about to take this to a gallery of very similar paintings. <laughs> boy, boy, did I, <laughs> did I not realize how right I was? <laughs> and now we've gone back to free roaming our house as it actually exists, not as it exists within our impossible space. And when we came back to the house, everything seemed to be mostly intact. Oh, the key's right where it was last time. My dearest wife, I know that the past few days didn't seem devastating. I know that I should have been more supportive, more caring, more selfless. I still can't believe some of the things I said to you. I guess I was never meant to be a great husband or father. I thought I could be a great artist, but that dream has ended as well. In its absence, I will do my best to treat you with all the love and compassion you deserve. You're the love of my life, my muse. You will never read this letter. I'm so sorry. Yeah, as I thought, he wrote that letter after she fucking killed herself. So, there is some remorse at the final gate, and not just pity, like, self-pity. But also, we've just got banana pants. So, uh, this, what I'm, I'm getting from the squalor of this manor is that when we arrived, it was not actually in good condition. That it was trashed. Uh. Oh. And, here we have some credits. gonna flick through these so you all know you all know what's what actually there's a lot of these so so layers of fear uh i you know again i i appreciate the atmosphere of the game uh, <laughs> I so appreciate that creepy doll. Uh, I appreciate the atmosphere of the game, and I find it... I found it enjoyable, and also kind of stimulating, and I really like a lot of the technological tricks here. Uh, I do see why people heap scorn upon it, uh, as there is kind of a... There's a faction and contingent of critics who dislike games without a skill challenge element. And this game really does not have a skill challenge element. Um, okay, thanks to everybody who got early access. That was certainly not me. I acquired this game long after its uh, inception. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that clearly this is meant to be an atmospheric experience. And I think that you certainly can't fault the artistry of it uh, in terms of its just its visual design, uh, its transitions. I, sh I should say the craft of it uh, in, in that sense. You know, you can quibble with how, uh, I don't really know what this is gonna have to do if I mess with it, but nothing. There's no record in place. I'm quite happy with that, as I don't really want any additional content from this room at the moment. Fucking around with that phonograph was probably one of my least favorite mid-stages. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think that there's definitely room for games like this on the market. Uh, oh. And here we discover, oh, the reality of all of our paintings. We weren't painting her as a monster. We were painting her, I'm going to say, how we were trying to remember what she looked like, but we kept getting it wrong. And see, there, there we're kind of painting in some of her burns. It's like we can't remember what 
her face was before the accident, and we're trying to recreate it to no success. That's interesting. Uh, that, I like that. Uh, that, that, that. That kind of... And I like that they kind of give you the glimpse behind the curtain of symbolism uh, here, and that they kind of let you see what the output of that is. Alright, so we got a yeah, kind of bunch of rat traps here. So the rat fixation is real, but they're all empty also. So there ain't any real rats. It's just something we brought back from the trenches or whatnot have you. Uh, let's see. I think the kitchen is through here. Yeah, here's the kitchen. Pretty pretty dusty and horrible. Um, oh, that's interesting. That was supposed to be a painting full of apples. If this is a reality, it's weird that the fruit is gone. Unless we painted a painting of a broken fruit basket? Or is something else going on here? We bricked that off and covered with air freshener, so... Okay, so within the reality of this game, uh, that suggests to me that there's actually is a bunch of rancid stuff back here. Like a bunch of meat and stuff that we've let go bad because we're just completely negligent. And, you know, at this point we really have sadly lost our mind. Uh, and I really doubt that whatever I just went through was some sort of therapeutic spirit journey. And I'm going to guess here that I am being pushed towards the exit. But let's, let's make a full and careful study of everything. Or, oh, no, you know what? I bet you what's going to happen is I'm going to load up a new canvas and I'm going to start over. Oh, the bottles are gone. So, oh. Okay, the bottles are back and the cabinets are empty. And the canvas is back. I know how you must feel. Lost, alone, hopeless. You probably deserve it. But even for you, there's still a way, a way to bring it all back. The one precious thing you ever truly desired. Finish it. And that's in her sick note. And I'm guessing, actually, she didn't write that. I'm guessing that that's, that's some kind of, like, message we gave ourselves. Uh, it's, that, that this is some factor of our delusion. Well... And again. Now I wonder actually if I could have exited the house. I suspect not, but that probably would have been the healthy thing to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, to, to continue my thoughts from earlier, uh, I think I would rate Layers of Fear relatively highly. Uh, I am pleased by this change of pace in the horror landscape and from even the other horror games that I covered uh, and a few that didn't uh, quite make the cut uh, which is that it was and, you know I, for the most part like I think there was actually one death which was avoidable but for the most part I in, played this game in one continuous playthrough and I, to be honest I actually think that for most games that's ideal uh, I actually think that most video games uh, that have like kind of an immersive element to them are better if you don't die and have to replay sections. Uh, that that is my feeling. Uh, now I, I'm not saying that that it's incumbent on the developer to make the game easy, or it's even incumbent on the player to choose the difficulty setting they find easy. You know, I to be honest, I have a habit of picking the hardest difficulties I can, whether or not that actually ends up uh, enhancing my experience, but. With this kind of game, which is about immersion in a narrative, uh, nothing is worse than just kind of having to, like, stop and rewind the movie. So, uh, I'm, I'm not at all upset that there's not more quote-unquote gameplay. And there are puzzles, so, I mean, that, that that's a thing. You know, cons if you wanted to categorize this on some grandfathered-in genre, you could easily just say it's a horror adventure game. Uh, it's not, you know, much of an adventure game in the sense that the, the puzzles are relatively sparse, but, you know, I think that there's lots of subtle puzzles that aren't like, oh, you know, here's a unique asset like that Ouija board that I never actually ended up using for anything, so I, I kind of wonder if there's some hidden content there, but, um, yeah, uh, you know, one question that's actually lingering on my mind is, what is all the stuff I'm using to paint with supposed to be? Am I literally supposed to be butchering someone? Because, you know, I, there, there's so much detail 
uh, in the delusions we sort of shared about how like the, the taste of the blood and there's so much like sort of tangible present detail that, that to me that suggests that we're actually supposed to be enacting this but who exactly are we getting this stuff from? Uh, I'm presuming our daughter was just taken away from us, although maybe I'm missing something. I wonder if I played the game again and paid a little more close heed to the symbolism, I'd discover elements of the story that I missed. I do know that there's DLC for this game. I don't know if I plan to play it uh, for this series. We'll have to see. Uh, I almost kind of wonder if giving the game away in the Humble Bundle was a kind of inducement for people to buy the DLC, maybe. Uh, to kind of your game by way of demo for uh, additional downloadable content. Don't look back. Ooh. I think that's supposed to be just like a callback to don't look back or else you get killed by the monster. Uh, and maybe also just kind of like a statement like, you know, it's dwelling on the past that causes this kind of obsessive problems. But I also kind of feel a little eerie. I think it's supposed to leave you with that last, like, last shot of Psycho feeling of, ooh, don't turn around, because... Okay, there's no scary monster there. Uh, everything's fine.